So let's just keep going here. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. There's one God, and he's made of three parts, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That could be confusing to people. How could it be one and three? And just at a real local, easy level, you could think of water is in three phases, right? It can be steam, it can be ice, it can be liquid. Same substance, three different phases of it. And that's how God is. Because he loves us, he's not just a distant God. The Bible tells us if we look at Jesus, we're seeing God. He said that about himself. And John said it right at the beginning in the first chapter. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. What did that mean? They beheld his glory. What would that have referenced in the Old Testament when they said, we beheld glory of God? Anybody remember any of those scenes in the Bible? Remember when they dedicated the temple? And Solomon dedicated the temple, and it says the, 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 the substance was like a cloud. It was so strong, and the ministers couldn't stand to minister. <laughs> and how about when they were in the desert, and they would see a cloud by day? and a fire by night. He would manifest himself in so many different ways. And then in the New Testament, we know Jesus is up on the mountain, and he's got a couple of his disciples with him, and they manifest the, the glory of God was right on Elijah, Moses, and Jesus. It was called the Mount of Transfiguration. And Peter's like, let's build memorials here. And the father says, this is my son. Just listen to him. <laughs> the, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yes, that was 2,000 years ago, but does he still dwell among us now? Yes, blessed are those who believe because they saw me, but Jesus said, blessed are those who believe even though they haven't seen. And you might not have physically seen him, but you know he's real. How many know he's real? Yeah, no doubt in your mind about it. No, okay, but it's something happens on the way to your job that causes you to start forgetting that you need him there too. This is, there's no time that God doesn't want to be fully in front of you. That everything you see, you see through that lens of all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, all your strength. And the glory as the only begotten of the Father, that was Jesus, full of grace and truth. Now, I love this verse. I know you probably know it in Romans 1.16. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Huh, for it's the power of God to salvation for some of the people that believe it. Everyone, everyone, Diana, pregnant teenager, not looking good. Look how her life turned around. Oh, anybody got a similar story? I'm raising my hand because I do. It's unbelievable. It's not something I, because I'm so great. It's because he's so great. And, you know, the more that you're willing to yield to that spirit and the word of God, the more likely you are to be able to obey it. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God. The gospel, the good news. The good news isn't that just that he died on the cross so your sins could be forgiven. The, the good news is that he rose from the dead. Because when he rose, he defeated death that came into the garden through Adam and Eve. The devil said, oh, you're going you're gonna to die if you eat. I mean, I'm sorry. He challenged them and said, you're not going to die if you eat of that fruit. And look, they didn't die when they ate it, but they brought death into the garden. And that's it. The reversal of the curse is Jesus defeats death by being rose, by being risen from the dead. But then it says the same spirit that did that is in you. So there's no dead situation in any of us that he can't turn around. That's who he is. Abraham and Sarah, they're, they're dead to being able to have another child. But God calls those things that are not as though they are, even when we laugh at him. That was Sarah, remember? <laughs> that guy's going to get me pregnant? I don't think so. For in it, the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. So, uh, you know, again, there's a lot of ways we could describe the good news. It is so important to realize that our sins have been forgiven, that it was only because of the shed blood of Jesus but if he only died on the cross and there was no resurrection, then we have no hope. Paul says that in 1 Corinthians 15. With, without the resurrection, your faith is futile. There's a lot of words that he uses. So that's the hope, that no matter what somebody's situation is, God can turn it around supernaturally. So to say that somebody is hopeless, they can't ever change, is denying the power of God. You don't have the right to do that. 
So be careful. You might think they've never changed. They might have done the same thing to you a hundred times, and it hurt every time. Well, they'll never change. Wait a minute. You just said God can't change somebody. We know that's not right. So you need to change your heart to say, Lord, give him a revival. Make him repent and come and say he's sorry. <laughs> that's optional. That's an optional part. <laughs> if the Lord gives them a revival personally, they will come and say they're sorry. Amen. As, it, as it's written, the just shall live by faith. And I just want to stay there for a minute because that was the key verse in all of the Reformation with Martin Luther, that was what the essence turned out to be, the just shall live by faith, meaning it's not about being part of the Catholic Church, which was the church at the time. It's, it's not about where you go. The thief on the cross hanging next to Jesus could never go to a church or get baptized, and he said, today you'll be with me in paradise because you made a decision. That's what gets you in right standing with God, making a decision not the formal things that we can do. And they were caught up in all the formal. No, Paul was saying, Peter, what are you doing? You're sitting with the Jews and you're ignoring the Gentiles. You're going back to the old law, the thing that we got delivered from. And he called them out right to his face. I mean, you know, Peter was a big guy, an important man in the church. But Paul was like, you're missing something here. You're not loving the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Because you're drifting back to the old way. And look, you know, again, I'm sorry, I don't mean to pick on anybody, but I've been a worship leader for a long time, and um, I've seen people that did not look like they wanted to be in the worship service. <laughs> you know, like, they got dragged there, and like, do you ever see the picture of the, of the airplane, and the, and, the, and the guy's trying to jump out the plane, but he's got his arms and his legs, like, stretched out, and they're trying to push him out? It's like, that must be what this guy looked like this morning on the way out the door. But you know what? I learned a long time ago, and there's a great um, clip on our um, YouTube channel and our Facebook page of Kim Owens, who's a pastor out in uh, Phoenix area. We're having a big revival right now. She had the same issue. She said, when I was a worship leader, I would look, and they, they would look like their arms are all folded, and they're mad, and they're like, make me worship, make me worship. <laughs> And she would come out, young girl, you know, great voice, but she'd be like, oh, my God, I must not have prayed enough. I must not have read enough. And then she says, one day I realized it's not me that hasn't prayed enough. It's them that hasn't prayed enough. It's not me that hasn't read enough. They haven't read enough. So I'm not, she basically said, I'm not letting that religious spirit stop me from worshiping because I'm going to lead the other people in who want to be brought into the presence. And what can happen is we just get a familiar a familiarity with the things of church, and we don't even expect when we walk in the door to experience the presence of God. Can I just say, hit the reset button, if that's you right now? Every time we get together, he's with us. That's a promise. Two people. It's all you need. Two people gathered in my name, I'm there. Well, can you act like he's here? Yeah. You'd be pretty excited. If you saw him, but the just shall live by faith. That's what keeps us in right standing. And there's an amazing, contagious aspect of worship. And you could have seen it, you know, at some of the, uh, of the crusades when there were so many people at a healing crusade that were all expecting to get healed and all had faith for healing. It changes the whole atmosphere. It charges the atmosphere and increases the chance of healing. Healing. 